Part 6 Art of Seduction 17. Effect A. Regression People who have experienced a certain kind of pleasure in the past will try to repeat or relive it. The deepest rooted and most pleasurable memories are usually those from earliest childhood and are often unconsciously associated with a parental figure. Bring your targets back to that point by placing yourself in the Oedipal triangle and positioning them as the needy child. Unaware of the cause of their emotional response, they will fall in love with you. Alter or alternatively, you, can too, you too can regress, letting them play the role of the protecting, nursing parent. In either case, you are offering the ultimate fantasy, the chance to have an intimate relationship with mommy or daddy, son or daughter. As adults, we tend to overvalue our childhood. In their dependency and powerlessness, children genuinely suffer. Yet, we, yet when we get older, we conveniently forget about that and sentimental, sentimentalize the supposed paradise we have left behind. We forget the pain and remember only the pleasure. Why? Because the responsibilities of adult life are a burden so oppressive at times that we secretly yearn for the dependency of childhood, for that person who looked after our every need, assumed our cares and worries. This daydream of ours has a strong erotic component, for the child's feelings of, a, of being dependent on the partner or on the parent is charged with sexual undertones. Give people a sensation similar to that protected dependent feeling of childhood and they will project all kinds of fantasies onto you including feelings of love or sexual attraction that will attribute to something else that they will attribute to something else we won't admit it but we long to regress to shed our adult exterior and vent the childish emotions that linger beneath the surface to effect a regression, you will need to encourage people to talk about their childhood. Most of us are only too happy to oblige, and our memories are so vivid and emotional that a part of us regresses just in talking about our early years. Also, in the course of talking, little secrets slip out. We reveal all kinds of valuable informations information about our weaknesses and our mental makeup, information you must attend to and remember. Do not take your target's word at face value. Pay attention to their tone of voice, to any nervous tics as they talk, and particularly to anything they do not want to talk about, anything they deny or that makes them emotional. Many statements actually mean their opposite. Should they say they hated their father, or for instance, you can be sure that they are hiding a lot of disappointments, that they actually loved their father only too much, and perhaps never quite got what they wanted from him. With the information you have gathered, you can now effect the regression. Perhaps you have uncovered a powerful attachment to a sibling, a teacher, or any early infatuation a person who casts a shadow over their present lives. Knowing what it was about this person that affected them so powerfully, you can now take over that role. Or perhaps you have learned of an immense gap in their childhood, a neglectful father, for instance. You act like that parent now, but you replace the original neglect with the attention that the real parent never supplied. The regressions you can affect fall into four main types. The infantile regression. The first bond, the bond between a mother and her infant, is the most powerful one. 
Unlike other animals, humans, babies, human babies have a long period of helplessness during which they are dependent on their mother, creating an attachment that influences the rest of their lives. The key to affecting this regression is to reproduce the sense of unconditional love a mother has for her child. Never judge your targets. Let them do whatever they want, including behaving badly. At the same time, surround them with loving attention. Smother them with comfort. The Oedipal Regression After the bond between mother and child comes to comes the Oedipal Triangle of mother, father and child. This triangle forms during the period of the child's earliest erotic fantasies. A boy wants his mother to himself, a girl does the same with her father. But they never quite have it that way, for a parent will always have competing connections to a spouse or to other adults. Unconditional love has gone now inevitably. The parent must sometimes deny what the children desire, what the child desires. Transport your victims back to this period. Play a parent or role. Be loving, but also sometimes cold and instill some discipline. Children actually love a little discipline. It makes them feel that adult cares about them. It makes it makes them feel that the adult cares about them. And adult children too will be thrilled if you mix your tenderness with a little toughness and punishment. Remember to include an erotic component in your parental behavior. Now your tar now your targets are not only getting their mother or father all to themselves, they are going they are getting something more, something previously forbidden but now allowed. The ego ideal regression. As children we often form an ideal figure out of our dreams and ambitions. First, that ideal figure is the person we want to be. We imagine ourselves as brave adventurers, romantic figures. Then, in our adults' adolescence, we turn our attention to others, often projecting our ideals onto them. The first boy or girl we fall in love with may seem to have the deal qualities we wanted for ourselves or else may make us feel that we, we can play that ideal role in relation to them. Most of us carry these ideals around with us. We are secretly disappointed in how much we have had to compromise, how far below the ideal we have fallen as we have gotten older. Make your targets feel they are living out this youthful ideal and coming closer to being the person they wanted to be and you will affect a different kind of regression, creating a feeling reminiscent of adolescence. The relationship between you and the seduced is this instant more equal than in the previous kinds of regressions, more like the affection between siblings. In fact, the ideal is often modeled on a brother or sister. To create this effect, strive to reproduce the intense, innocent mood of a youthful infatuation. The reverse parental regression. Here you are the one to regress. You deliberately play the role of the cute, adorable, yet also sexually char charged child. Older people always find younger people incredibly seductive. In the presence of youth, they feel a little of their own youth return. But they are, in fact, older. And mixed into the invigoration they feel in young people's company is the pleasure of playing the mother or father to them. Symbol, the bed. Lying alone in bed, the child feels unprotected, afraid and needy. In a nearby room, there is the parent's bed. It is large and forbidding, sight of things you are not supposed to know about. Give the seduced both feelings, helplessness, and transgression as you lay them into bed and put them to sleep. 
18. Stir up the transgressive and taboo. There are always social limits on what one can do. Some of these, the most elemental taboos, go back centuries. Others are more superficial, simply defying polite and acceptable behavior, making your targets feel that you are leading them past either kind of limit is immensely seductive. People yearn to explore their dark side. Not everything in romantic love is supposed to be tender and soft. Hint that you have a cruel, even sadic, sadistic streak. You do, not, you do not respect age differences, marriage vows, family ties. Once the desire to transgress draws your targets to you, it will be hard for them to stop. Take them further than they imagined. The shared feeling of guilt and complicity will create a powerful bond. Society and culture are based on limits. This kind of behavior is acceptable, but that is not. The limits are fluid and change with time, but there are always limits. The alternative is anarchy the lawlessness of nature, which we dread. But we are strange animals. The moment any kind of limit is imposed, physically or psychologically, we are instantly curious. A part of us wants to go beyond that limit, to explore what is forbidden. If, as children, we are told not to go past a certain point in the woods, that is precisely where we want to go. But we grow older and become polite and deferential, more and more boundaries encumber our lives. Do not confuse politeness with happiness, however. It covers up frustration, unwanted compromise. How can we explore the shadow of our personality without incurring punishment or ostracism? It seeps out in our dreams. We sometimes wake up with a sense of guilt at the murder, incest, adultery, and mayhem that goes on in our dreams until we realize no one needs to know about it but, but ourselves. But give a person the sense that with you they will have a chance to explore the outer reaches of acceptable, polite behavior that will, that with you they can vent some of their closeted personality and you create the ingredients for a deep and powerful seduction. You will have to go beyond the point of merely teasing them with an elusive fantasy. The shock and seductive power will come from the reality of what you are offering them. If they have followed you merely out of curiosity, they may feel some fear and hesitation, but once they are hooked, they will find you hard to resist, for it is hard to return to a limit once you have transgressed and gone past it. The moment people feel that something is prohibited, a part of them will want it. That is what makes a married man or woman such a delicious target. The more someone is prohibited, the greater the desire. Since what is forbidden is desired, Somehow, you must make yourself seem forbidden. The most blatant, blatant way to do this is to engage in behavior that gives you a dark and forbidden aura. Theoretically, you are someone to avoid. In fact, you are too seductive to resist. Play up your dark side and you will have a similar effect. For your targets to be involved with you means going beyond their limits, doing something naughty and unacceptable to society, to their peers. For many, that is reason to bite the bait. The great 18th century rake the Duke de Richelieu had a predilect Delection, predilection for young girls and often he would heighten the seduction by enveloping them in transgressive behavior. 
to which the young are particularly particularly susceptible. He would try to turn the young girl against her parents, ridiculing their religious zeal or prudery or pious behavior. The Duke's strategy was to attack the values that his targets held dearest, precisely the values that represent a limit. In a young person, family ties, religious ties, and the like are use- useful to the seducer. Young people barely need a reason to rebel against them. The strategy, though, can be applied to a person of any age. For every deeply held value, there is a shadow side, a doubt, a desire to explore what those values forbid. Love is supposed to be tender and delicate, but in fact it can release violent and destructive emotions, and the possible violence of love, the way it breaks down our normal reasonableness, is just what attracts us. Approach romance's violent side by mixing a cruel streak into your tender attentions, particularly in the latter stages of the seduction, when the target is in your clutches. A masochistic involvement can represent a great transgressive release. The more illicit your seduction feels, the more powerful its effect. Give your targets the feeling that they are committing a kind of crime, a deed whose guilt they share with you. Create public moments in which the two of you know something that those around you do not. It could be phrases or looks that only you recognize a secret. It is critical to play on tensions like these in public. Creating sense, a, creating a sense of Uh, complicity and collision against the world. People may be straining to remove restrictions on private behavior to make everything freer in the world today, but that is only, but that only makes seduction more difficult and less exciting. Do what you can to reintroduce a feeling of transgression and crime even if it is only psychological or illusionary. There must be obstacles to overcome, social social norms to flout, laws to break, before the seduction can be consummated, consummated. It might seem that a permissive society imposes few limits find some there will be always there will always be limits sacred cows behavioral standards endless ammunition ammunition for stirring up the transgressive and taboo symbol the forest the children are told not to go into the forest that lies just beyond the safe confines of their home. There is no law there, only wilderness, wild animals and criminals. But the chance to explore the alluring darkness and the fact that it is prohibited are impossible to resist, and once inside, they want to go further or farther. 19. Use spiritual lures. Everyone has doubts and insecurities about their body, their self-worth, their their sexuality. If your seduction appeals exclusively to the physical, you will stir up these doubts and make your targets self-conscious. Instead, lure them out of their insecurities by making them focus on something sublime and spiritual, a religious experience, a lofty work of art, the occult. Play up your divine qualities, affect an air of discontent with worldly things, speak of the stars, destiny, the hidden threads that unite you and the object of the seduction. Lost in a spiritual mist, the target will feel light and and uninhibited. Deepen the effect of your seduction by making its sexual 
culmination seem like the spiritual union of two souls. Religion is the most seductive system that mankind has created. Death is our greatest fear, and religion offers us the illusion that we are immortal, that something about us will live on. The idea that we are an in infinitesimal part of a vast and indifferent universe is terrifying. Religion humanizes this universe, makes us feel important and loved. We are not animals governed by uncontrollable drives, animals that die for no apparent reason, but creatures made in the image of a supreme being. We too can be sublime, ra rational, and good. Anything that feeds a desire or a wished for illusion is seductive. And nothing can match religion in this arena. Pleasure is the bait that you use to lure a person into your web. But no matter how clever a seducer you are, in the back of your target's mind, they are aware of the end game, the physical conclusion towards which you are heading. You may think your target is unrepressed and hungry for pleasure, but almost all of us are plagued by an underlying unease with our animal nature. Unless you deal with this unease, your seduction, even when successful in the short term, will be superficial and temporary. Instead, try to capture your target's soul to build the foundation of a deep and lasting seduction. Lure the victim deep into your web with spirituality, making physical pleasure seem sublime and transcendent. Spirituality will disguise your manipulations, suggesting that your relationship is timeless and creating a space for ecstasy in the victim's mind. Remember that seduction is a mental process and nothing is more mentally intoxicating than religion, spirituality, and the occult. As a seducer, you use religion and spirituality as a kind of distracting device. You invite the other person to worship something beautiful in the world. It could be nature, a work of art, or an exotic religion. It could even be a noble cause, a saint, or a guru. People are dying to believe in something. In the process, your targets are taken outside themselves connecting or connected to something larger while distracted from the physical element of your seduction. If you can make yourself seem to resemble the thing you are worshipping, you are natural, aesthetic, noble and sublime. Your targets will transfer their worship to you. They will barely notice the transition to something more physical and sexual. From spiritual ecstasy to sexual to sexual ecstasy is but one small step. Affect a spiritual air by displaying a discontent with the banalities of life. It is not money or sex or success that moves you. Your drives are never so base. No. Something much deeper motivates you. Whatever this is, keep it vague, letting the target imagine your hidden depths. The stars, astrology, fate are always appealing. Create the sense that destiny has brought you and your target together. That will make your seduction feel more natural. In a world where too much is controlled and manufactured, the sense that fate, necessity, or some higher power is guiding your relationship is dowly seductive. If you want to weave religious motives into your seduction, it is always best to choose some distant exotic, rela exotic religion with a slightly pagan air. Pagan air. It is easy to move from pagan spirituality to pagan Earthiness. Timing counts. Once you have stirred your target soul, move quickly to the physical, making sexuality seem merely an extension of the spiritual vibrations you are experiencing. In other words, employ the spiritual strategy as close 
to the time of your, for your bold move as possible. The spiritual is not exclusively the religious or the occult. It is anything that will add a sublime, timeless quality to your seduction. In the modern world, culture and art have, in some ways, taken the place of religion. There are two ways to use art in your seduction. First, create it yourself, in the target's honor. Poetry that they have inspired you to write will always work well. Half Picasso's appeal to many women was the hope that he would immortalize them in his paintings. For Ars Longa Vita Brives, art is long, life is short, as they used to say in Rome. Even if your love is a passing fancy, by capturing it in a work of art, you give it a seductive illusion of eternity. The second way to use art is to make it ennoble the affair, giving your seduction an elevated edge. Take your targets to the theatre, to the opera, to museums, to places full of history and atmosphere. In such places, your souls can vibrate to the same spiritual wavelength. Of course, you should avoid works of art that are earthy or vulgar, calling attention to your intentions. The play, movie, or book can be contem contemporary, even a little raw, as long as it contains a noble message and is tied to some just cause. Even a political movement can be spiritually uplifting. Remember to tailor your spiritual lures to the target. If the target is earthy and cynical, paganism or art will be more productive than the occult or religion or religious piety. Spirituality, the love of God, is a sublimated version of sexual love. The language of the religious mystics of the Middle Ages is full of erotic images. The contemplation of God and of the sublime can offer a kind of mental orgasm. There is no more seduction. There is no more seductive brew than the combination of the spiritual and the sexual, the high and the low. When you talk of spiritual matters, then let your looks and physical presence hint of sexuality at the same time. Make the harmony of the universe and union with God seem to confuse with physical harmony and the union between two people. If you can make the end game of your seduction appear as a spiritual experience, you will heighten the physical pleasure and create a seduction with a deep and lasting effect. Symbol, the stars in the sky, objects of worship for centuries, and symbols of the sublime and divine. In contemplating them, we are momentarily distracted from everything mundane and mortal. We feel lightness. Lift your target's mind up, minds up to the stars and they will not notice what is happening here on earth. 20. Mix pleasure with pain. The greatest mistake in seduction is being too nice. At first, perhaps, your kindness is charming, but it soon grows mono, mono, monotonous. You are trying too hard to please and seem insecure. Instead of overwhelming your targets with niceness, try inflicting some pain. Lure them in with focused attention, then change, then change direction, appearing suddenly uninterested. Make them feel guilty and insecure. Even instigate a breakup, subjecting them to an emptiness and pain that will give you room to maneuver. Now a rapprochement, an apology, a return to your earlier kindness will turn them weak at the knees. The lower the lows you create, the greater the highs. To heighten the erotic change, create the excitement of fear. Almost everyone is more or less polite. 
We learn early on not to tell people what we really think of them. We smile at their jokes, act interested in their stories and problems. It is the only way to live with them. Eventually, this becomes a habit. We are nice, even when it isn't really necessary. We try to please other people, to not step on their toes, to avoid disagreements and conflict. Niceness is niceness in seduction, however. Though it may at first draw someone to you, it is soothing and comforting, soon loses all effect. Being too nice can literally push the target away from you. Erotic feeling depends on the creation of tension. Without tension, without anxiety and suspense, there can be no feeling of release, of true pleasure and joy. It is your task to create that tension in the target, to stimulate feelings of anxiety, to lead them to and from, so that the culmination of the seduction has real weight and intensity. So rid yourself of your nasty habit of avoiding conflict, which is in any case unnatural. You are most often nice, not out of your own inner goodness, but out of fear of displeasing, out of insecurity. Go beyond that fear and you suddenly have options, the freedom to create pain, then magically dissolve it. You, your seductive powers will increase tenfold. People will be less upset by your hurtful actions than you might imagine. In the world today, we often feel starved for experience. We crave emotion, even if it is negative. The pain you cause your targets then is bracing. It makes them feel more alive. They have something to complain about. They got to play the victim. As a result, once you have turned the pain into pleasure, they will readily forgive you. Stir up their feel, stir up their jealousy, make them feel insecure, and the validation you later give their ego by preferring them over their rivals is doubly delightful. Remember, you have more to fear by boring your targets than by shaking them up. Wounding people binds them to you more deeply than kindness. If you need inspiration, find the part of the target that most irritates you and use it as a springboard for some therapeutic conflict. The more real your cruelty, the more effective it is. There is something bracing about fear. It makes you vibrate with sensation, heightens your awareness, is intensely erotic. The closer you bring your targets to the edge of their, of, of the precipice to the feeling that you could abandon them, the dizzier and more lust they will become. Falling in love means literally falling, losing control, a mix of fear and excitement. Never let your targets get too comfortable with you. They need to feel anxiety. Show them some coldness, a flash of anger they did not expect. Be irrational if necessary. There is always the trump card, a breakup. Let them feel they have lost you forever. Make them fear that they have lost the power to charm you. Let, let these feelings sit with them for a while. Then pull them back from the precipice. The reconciliation will be intense. Many of us have misogynistic yearnings without realizing it. It takes someone to inflict some pain on us for those deeply repressed desires to come to the surface. You must learn to recognize the types of hidden misogynists out there and for each one enjoys a particular kind of pain. For instance, there are people who feel that they deserve nothing good in life and who, unable to deal with success, sabotage themselves, with, sabotage themselves constantly. Be nice to them, admit that you admire them, and they are uncomfortable. Since they, they feel that they cannot possibly match up to the ideal figure you have clearly imagined them to be, 
Such self-saboteurs do better with a little punishment. Scold them. Make them aware their inadequities. Adequacies. They feel they deserve a much they they feel they deserve such criticism and when it comes it is with a sense of relief. It is also easy to make them feel guilty, a feeling that deep down they enjoy. Other people experience the responsibilities and duties of modern life as such a heavy burden. They long to give it all up. These people are often looking for someone or something to worship, a cause, a religion, a guru. Make them worship you. And then there are those who want to play the martyr. Recognize them by the joy they take in complaining, in feeling righteous and wronged. Then give them a reason to complain. Remember, appearances deceive. Often the strongest looking people may secretly want to be punished. In any event, follow up pain with pleasure, and you will create a state of dependency that will last for a long time. As a seducer, you must find a way to lower people's resistances. The charmer's approach of flattery and attention can be effective, particularly with, this, with the insecure, but it, but it can take months of work and can also backfire. To get a quicker result and to break down more inaccessible people, it is often better to alternate harnish, harshness and kindness. By being harsh, you create inner tensions. Your targets may be upset with you, but they are also asking themselves questions. What have they done to earn your dislike? When you, when you then are kind, they feel relieved but also concerned that at any moment they might somehow displease you again. Make use of this pattern to keep them in suspense, dreading your harshness and keen to keep your kind. And, and keen to keep you kind. Finally, your seduction should never follow a simple course upward toward pleasure and harmony. The climax will come too soon. And the pleasure will be weak. What makes us intensely appreciate, appreciate something is previous suffering. A brush with death makes us fall in love with life. A long journey makes a return home that much more pleasurable. Your task is to create moments of sadness, despair and anguish. To create the tension that allows for a great release. Do not worry about making people angry. Anger is a sure sign that you have your hooks in them. Nor should you be afraid that if you make yourself difficult, people will flee. We only abandon, we only abandon those who bore us. The ride on which you take your victims can be torturous, but never dull. At all costs, keep your targets emotional and on edge. Create enough highs and lows, and you will wear away the last vestiges of their willpower. Symbol The Precipice At the edge of a cliff, people often feel lightheaded, both fearful and dizzy. For a moment, they can imagine themselves falling headlong. At the same time, a part of them is tempted. Lead your targets as close to the edge as possible, then pull them back. No thrill without fear.